All right, what's up guys? So, welcome to the video. A little bit of different style video today. Just literally gonna do a Q&A. Thank you guys so much for 70,000 subs. That's actually kind of unreal, bro. Like, I remember starting this channel. I remember having like 89 subscribers on this channel and just uploading my first like little transformation video like that I edited on my phone and just not thinking anything of it. And then here we are like a few years later, like 70,000 on our way to 100k so yeah if you're new to the channel um, you can always subscribe it's free it's there helps me out I'm um, trying to get 100k but yeah thank you guys just so much for that it's incredible the amount of progress we've made so thank you all so much for everything that you guys do for me um, today we just are gonna do a little q and I'm gonna answer your guys' questions and before this video starts I wanted to have a little special announcement I got my boy beans my boy Jacob editing my videos now this, this is one of my best friends um, we've been friends since like I don't even know since we were pooping in diapers basically but yeah we've been friends for literally since like I don't know first second third grade something fourth grade I have no idea and um, he's very good with computers I've like seen him I feel like he could be a good editor so I basically hired him as my editor because Honestly, I feel like it's just much more productive for me to have someone else um, edit my videos. Plus, Jacob works, I, I don't mean to expose you, Jacob, but he works at Chick-fil-A, and I feel like if I help him out with the editing and I and I pay him for the editing, it can help him, like, you know, either not work there anymore or just overall just get him more money, and, you know, that's my dog, so I just feel like it's a good idea, and he's pretty good at editing, so, yeah, he's going to be editing the video. Jacob, throw a picture of us on screen when we were little babies or... Uh, I don't know, it's just a picture of us. Maybe the one off Colin's Instagram, yeah. That's me and Jacob. We've been friends for a very long time, and that's my guy. So he's gonna be editing my videos from now on. I finally have a fucking editor. So, you know, if, if Jacob cooks up, you guys can call him whatever you want. I call him Corn Dog, or I call him Jake, or Jakey, or Jacob, or Beans. It doesn't even matter. You guys can pick in the comments. But yeah, this is my new editor, and he's just, he's a really good guy. So yeah, he's gonna be editing my videos from now on. So thank you so much, Jacob, for that. And this is gonna be my first video that I'm sending him, so com drop a comment. If I, I know it's a very simple video, just a QA, I'm literally sitting here not doing anything, but drop a comment if you know the video was good at the end of it, you know, reassure him, because I'm sure it's gonna be good. But yeah, nonetheless, let's get this QA started. And uh, yeah. Alright, the first question that I saw, I just screenshotted a few questions. I'll throw up on the screen somewhere over here, or here, or here, or here, whichever one he decides. How to regain motivation after being cheated on? So I've never personally been, I mean, I have been kind of cheated on, but I was like 14 and like, you know, it's not really that serious back then, but I'm lied to and shit like that, but realistically, when you get cheated on, there's, there, there's no outcome of that where it's acceptable in any way, and there's no outcome of that where you should stay with that person. I don't even know, there's, there's really no excuse. So yeah, um, how to regain motivation, you just have to watch. I used to watch like breakup motivation like gym videos, like of guys like working out and they got like the Hodge twins talking like, you know, about the breakup and shit like that. I mean, I don't really have too much advice on that, but what I do know is the best thing you can do is keep occupied and keep your mind on things instead of just sitting there in your room all day th thinking about it all day. Like if, if you sit there and you don't do anything, it's gonna like, you know, always be in your head and you're not gonna stop thinking about it. So if you get like cheated on and you're heartbroken, just keep occupied on things, like find new hobbies, find things to do, go to the gym, things like that. So yeah, next question. I've literally got this question, I feel like in every Q&A video I've ever done, but I always answer it because I feel like it's really important and also I just feel like um, maybe sometimes people that haven't still heard me say it, but how many people in high school about you? So there was a lot. Um, a lot of those people today, they probably, their biggest flex is probably that they even knew me, but yeah, a lot of people in high school would make jokes or like say things. It wasn't like super, super, super often, but you definitely had those remarks and like even though they were jokes or whatever, it always bothered me because you know, I'm a stereotypical like guy who was doing steroids, like lifting weights, things like that, and it, and it did bother me, but I just wanted to let you guys know like the reason that they're doing that is because they're insecure. Like you're lifting weights, you're bettering yourself, you're literally like doing things that you love to do and people hate to see that, especially in high school when kids are a lot more like immature than they are when they're adults. So if they're doing that, they're just insecure, bro. But every time that people would, would do that, I simply would just be like, I don't fucking care, too fucking bad, basically. And I would just either, like, I'd really, realistically, I would just ignore it, so, uh, yeah. The fact that there was countless people that, that used to say those things and I would just kind of rush them off. Um, and it's very important if those things happen to literally just brush them off because at the end of the day, you're bettering them yourself and they're not, and they're just hating for no reason. So yeah, uh, basically just don't give a f Because if I listen to any of those people who said those things, I wouldn't be sitting here right now talking to you guys. Why don't you play Comp Call of Duty? I saw that you only won censored a while back. I don't play Comp Call of Duty because 
I don't have time. Like, I feel like the learning curve for like comp Call of Duty and being like a pro at Call of Duty is something that you need to spend countless hours and hours putting time into. And yes, I'm very good. You guys know if you see in the streams, I'm literally cracked um, out of my mind. I don't even have a PC setup. I have like literally just a PS5. I have good internet, but like even before that, I literally won v one one of the best Call of Duty players on earth, and he has like a six thousand dollar PC. I had to assume like crazy setup, crazy Wi-Fi. At the time, I was playing on like a ten upload, ten gigabyte or like megabyte uh, upload and download speed internet with like just a PS PS4 at the time. So, uh, and I still almost won in one of the matches. So I am very good, but I feel like it's just something that you need to put way more time into than I have. And also, like, I am very passionate about video games in a way, and I really like playing video games, but in terms of going pro, I don't feel like I have the mental capacity to do that, and I really just prefer playing games for fun, but yeah, that's kind of why I don't really try to do that, or I never, it never has been, like, a goal of mine. Your all-time favorite lift that you've hit? I've heard this question a lot. People, A lot of people would assume it's a 620 deadlift I did with James, and yeah, that was amazing, but in terms of my all-time favorite, that means the most to me. It was definitely my 500-pound squat when I was 17 years old. I remember I failed it like three times before I ever got it and like just I remember the feeling of getting it like 500 is half of a thousand pounds and it's just like that specific number is just crazy and the squat is in between the deadlift and the bench so 500 bench is like kind of unrealistic for me and a 500 deadlift was kind of easy to get but the squat is like that's like that number right there and I just remember feeling like crazy emotions when I did that and I, I, I remember like every moment of the day I did it so yeah definitely the 500 pound squat for the first time high bar when I was like 17. When are you planning to compete next and where do you see yourself in five years? Much love from, uh, um, uh, uh, <clears throat> you know, uh, that, that place. Yeah, I, I know I know what he's talking about. I, I just was making sure you guys knew what the flag was in there. Like, I don't want to tell you guys because I want you guys to learn, you know? So yeah, um, much love from that place. Uh, but anyway, I don't plan on competing soon. Um, not really. I've taken a big break off of powerlifting, as you guys probably know, because I just feel like my body needed a break, and I just kind of feel like I'm just not in that powerlifting mindset right now, so not anytime very, very soon. I feel like I could potentially compete again, though, within the next like two, th two years or like a year or so. Um, and where do I see myself in five years from now? I really want to start up my own like brand, kind of, um, in terms of like clothing. I want to start up, not, not my own like clothing brand, but like you know, something like Vical that like James has, or just some it's my own personal merch. Um, and I just see myself definitely in my own house. I definitely want to get my own house, see myself having a nice car. Getting married to Aaron, who knows? I mean, I don't see us breaking up or anything like that. And just having a nice big yard for the dogs, things like that. And still doing fitness, still inspiring guys, still like learning, giving you guys tips, um, just doing my thing. But honestly, down the line, I feel like deep down in me, which I like have been thinking lately, is I kind of want to compete in like a bodybuilding show. And I don't know how serious it'll get, but yeah, eventually I definitely want to do that. So I don't know in five years, but hopefully I definitely have a house and a nice car. That's just about it, instead of living in the apartment. Which the apartment's nice, but you know, car or car and house would be better. What was the moment you realized you could do this for a living? Um, the moment that I realized I could do this for a living is my first upload on YouTube, or like one of my first uploads when I uploaded my first ever transformation video that I literally made on my phone. When that did good, and people were saying how good my genetics were and how things like that, like when you have the genetics and you just have that look to you, you just do, it's like a gift. Um, and as soon as I uploaded that video and it did well, I kind of just figured I, I knew. I always wanted it, but that's when I kind of knew. I guess another one that I, or another moment that I really knew is when Gymshark emailed me when I was literally like 17 years old, so yeah. How much Turk pills should you take a day? A lot of people don't know, but you're supposed to take six capsules a day. The half-life of the Turkesterone is unknown. So it's much more beneficial slash more inclined to work through the testosterone if you take six pills a day every two to three hours. I only ran it for four weeks. You're supposed to run it for eight weeks, six capsules a day. I only ran it for four weeks, six capsules a day, but I was taking two, two, two. So two like in the morning, two in the midday, and then two at night, which probably wasn't the most beneficial way I could do it. Plus I didn't run it long enough. But um, yeah, that's basically how much you should take and when you should take it. What do you want people to remember? about you when, you when you're gone. I want you guys to always remember one thing is that I would never lie to you. And anything I said in any of my videos, I never have lied because honestly, that's something that I hold really like near and dear to me is like, I don't cap about things to you guys. Like I wanna be remembered for being real as f and I wanna be remembered in a way that like kind of Ziz was, not in terms of how he was remembered, but in terms of how much people he inspired kind of and what he was about, just living his life, loving his life, doing whatever he wanted to do and just being honest and that's kind of how i perceive that like i definitely want to be remembered for being honest because i i really do like i know people don't believe me and 
it comes down to what you believe. But for me, like I hold it near and dear that I don't cap with you guys, and that I like that. So, what do you consider f***ing me? No, what the hell? Why go balls? I f*** with it, but why balls? Of course, go balls to the moon, though. I don't know. Uh, there's no really reason. I just think it's. I just. I don't even know. I think I literally randomly texted Derek out of nowhere because I was like, should my code just be something stupid like balls? And he said, sure. So it's ever. It's always been that. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. Honestly, there's not really a point to it. Do you care whether people think you're natty or not? I don't care what people like. If somebody's like, oh, you're not natural. Like, I don't really care. Um, and if they say. Yeah, he's natural. I also don't really care. But what I do care about is if people think I'm an honest person, I guess, which is like important to me. So I guess yes and no, but realistically just people thinking I'm honest is what's more important. And also just the only reason that I went through what I went through and did everything that I could have to prove that I was natural when I did my meet, which I mean, I've been lifetime natty, but you know, it's the only time that I could technically prove it. You can't. Like even though I took the test, I can't say I was natural like four years ago and people will believe it, right? The reason that I did that is to kind of show that there is hope. Like there is, there are influencers out there, influencers out there that are natural and that do get misjudged and that, that can be impressive. And it's not to, sh to show you guys and be like, hey, expect the same progress as I. Like do exactly what I do and, and you'll get the same exact results as me. Like everyone has a different genetic build um, and gen genetic structure, genetic like response to training and how they train, how they eat, things like that. So you'll never be me. You might probably never even look like me. I mean, I'm sure you won't. You don't have the same insertions, but you won't look like me. You won't be like me and you probably won't ever, you know, and it, it's not in terms of like, yeah, you could be as strong as me. You could be the same body fat as me potentially, but I don't go around saying, hey, like I'm gonna claim natural because I want everyone out there to expect to be like me. I, I preach the opposite of that. And I don't sell programs. I don't sell you guys fitness advice. And it's because like, if I do that, I feel like people would probably think, oh, I mean, yeah, one day I could, I could release it. I'd make sure it's good though, but I haven't so far because it's like, if I do that, people are gonna think, oh, well, he's releasing this program and, he, because, and, and I'm gonna do it because I wanna look like him, which isn't even the case. I care, like, do, do you care whether people think you're natural or not? I'm more care that they think I'm just an honest person and I care about that there's hope. You actually can succeed in fitness without steroids. You can be strong without steroids. You can look good without steroids. Like I said, you won't, maybe you won't look as good as me. Maybe you'll look better than me. I don't know, but that's just kind of my stance on that. So yeah. Are you juiced or just have good genetics? So this is the question of, am I on steroids? No, I'm not on steroids. I know people hate to, some people hate to hear that. If I took anything, I would be honest. I mean, when I first took Tercasterone, I literally announced it on my story immediately before the first capsule I took because and I literally said I'm going to run this for my meat. In my head I'm like, this this could be to some people unnatural, it could be natural to me, it could be natural to other people, and it could be unnatural to other people, right? So it just depends on the stance and I'm going to say it. Even though I, in my opinion it's a natural supplement, I know it would be controversial so I'm going to say it. You know what I mean? So. That's why I did that and I'm not on steroids. It is just good genetics and also a lot of hard work, which sounds cliche, but it is true. So yeah, I'm first gonna say hi. And then we're gonna move you down. And then we're trying to step right in it. All right, there's no way these Australian Shepherd puppies are gonna, yeah, stay still. Let me put them in their cage. Bonnie, come here, come here. Cage. No, Bert, that's not your cage. <sighs> what is going on? Bonnie. Oh my goodness, bro. Alrighty, back to the Q&A. Alright, alright, alright. So, and then I also wanted to tie... Perfect. Sit. Yeah, you be pretty right there. Ah, oh, he's gonna be... I might have to put him in his cage, but... It's tercesterone a steroid. So, in my opinion, I don't think tercesterone is a steroid because when I read it for four weeks, I got my blood work done and everything came back perfectly normal, perfectly fine. My hormones were in check. Everything was perfectly good. And I feel like if I'm gonna take something and it doesn't affect my hormones in any way, how could it really be considered unnatural? So, I don't know, this is my opinion. Is moving out somewhere more motivating, like LA? Yeah, it's much more motivating. I mean, not being under your parents' control is like the most motivating thing ever. I mean, you feel like you finally have responsibility in your life over something more than just like nothing, I guess, if that makes sense. Like I really didn't have much to be responsible for at my house, but now that I live here, I just gotta get my own groceries, gotta take the dogs out, tend to the dogs, and do my own thing basically. So I feel like moving out is definitely the most motivating, life-changing thing that you can do. And it is scary, but once you do it, I feel like some people like me really needed it. Were you genuinely natural at the age of 16? I mean, yeah, I was much smaller when I was 16, but I was like a lot more shredded and a lot of people kind of kind of mistake that. A lot of pictures and everything that I post are like some of the best pictures I could take, you know what I mean? But like there's pictures of me just standing there like this and I look 
literally like a stick, like I don't even work out. Um, it's just the illusion of being like really shredded, I guess. I was natural when I was 16, yeah. I was na I've been natural the entire time that I've lived, so. New deadlift PR video with James. A lot of people have been requesting this. I don't know when it's gonna happen, but yeah, eventually one day me and him are gonna get back together in Hard Knocks Gym and we're gonna do what we did the time before, or maybe a different gym, I don't know, but it's gonna happen eventually. How's life, like really? Life is actually very good. There's really nothing wrong. I feel like everything's great. I feel like I'm in a good mindset. Um, I could be a little more organized, but other than that, I feel like my life is just great. I mean, I'm living the dream right now, I'm having fun. So yeah, life is really good, thank you for asking. Um, also, met, I met Jeff Side today. Go check it out on my Instagram, I'm having a picture with Jeff Side. Pretty unexpected. What are your thoughts about more athletes dropping Gymshark? This is basically when I, I'm gonna answer my stance on Gymshark and why I'm even with Gymshark because a lot of people have been saying leave or why are you with them? And um, it's understandable to a degree, but it's also not understandable to a degree. And my stance on Gymshark and Young LA and everyone just saying like, leave Gymshark or don't be with Gymshark anymore is like, you guys have to understand something is that I have both. Why would I just give up another source of income and kind of like a base that I've built and just people that I actually genuinely like that are on Gymshark that like manage me or that I'm kind of even friends with. Why would I leave all of that to get like nothing? Literally just to leave it, just to leave it because people don't respect it. And the reason that a lot of people don't really respect Gymshark any anymore is because the people that are on it, there's there's nobody really left if you think about it. I mean, Dylan, David, and Chris Bumstead, I mean, those are the only people left besides me that are kind of, I guess, relevant in, in the whole aesthetics and like bodybuilding kind of people, like audience. The reason that people say that is because it's always been like a wave to hate on Gymshark. Like even before Young LA, even before Sush, even before James got dro like dropped, things like that. Like it's always been just, it's always been cool to not like Gymshark, which is like, it's whatever. I mean, I get it. But to me, the more people that say leave, it makes me want to stay more. And on top of that, no offense to Young LA, I do love Young LA, but there's just some kids that are sponsored that it's just like, why? And Gymshark, only sponsors you if they actually think that you're special, like in a, in a way. I mean, yes, they're a company and it does come down to money or how you fit the certain category that they want you to fill or whatever it may be, but it's near impossible to be on like Gymshark in, in the type of way compared to like a lot of other companies. It's like a trophy, it's like the top. And there, there has been problems with me and Gymshark in the past and I have talked about them. I mean, I've literally sat down with the executive of Gymshark and I've told them I don't approve of like the fat people. I don't approve of like, the hairy armpit girls. I don't approve of that stuff and it's just my opinion and I don't have to approve it, but I mean, guys, they're a corporate company. How are they gonna compete with like Nike and Adidas and all these like activewear brands if they only branch out to one specific group of people, which is like, you know, the aesthetics and like the bodybuilders. And that's what Gymshark used to be at the beginning before they were huge like they are now. They only used to tend to those people. And in a way, in my honest opinion, Young LA is 2012 Gymshark right now. I have this, very old, deep love with Gymshark, but I also have this very new love with Young LA that kind of reminds me of the old Gymshark. And I really do like both of them in their own ways. And if you have both, I don't know what the future holds, but as of right now, I don't really see a particular reason to be like, hey, fuck you Gymshark, I'm leaving. So that's kind of my stance on that. Um, and it should be everyone's goal, I feel like right now, to get on Gymshark or Young LA, because Young LA is just, they're they're doing it right now, man. I mean, they're, they're really like 2012 Gymshark. They, they love the bodybuilding aspect. It's really just men's clothing. And I just feel like it just gives me like old Gymshark vibes. So yeah, it's kind of my stance is just why would I leave one if I have both and I have love for both of those brands um, in short. So yeah, that's why I'm still a Gymshark. That's why I'm not gonna leave Gymshark. Do you, do you genuinely enjoy training at Zoo or Gold's better? I'm gonna be honest, um, no offense to anybody that works at Zoo or that runs Zoo. I just don't really prefer Zoo. Um, in terms of powerlifting, it's probably one of the best gyms that, that's near me. Powerlifting is like amazing, it's everything you need, but bodybuilding, I mean, it's always packed. It's more of like an influencer gym. Zoo is more of like a uh, content gym in a way, and, and there's not really even that many machines in there. It's not really that big of a gym as well. And in terms of golds, I hate golds in terms of powerlifting, but because I'm in bodybuilding, it's been the best gym ever. It's huge, the lighting is amazing. You kind of feel privacy when you're there, no matter what time of the day, to a degree. Um, and I just feel like it's definitely the move. So yeah, I genuinely enjoy training at golds better than zoo. Best advice that you've learned? Best advice that I've heard is, you do a good job, they'll tell one person. You do a 
job, they'll tell 10 people. Do you eat butt? Yeah. I want to know how you're sponsored by Young LA and Gymshark. How does that work? I'm sponsored by Young LA and Gymshark um, in terms of I can only promote Young LA streetwear. So like this flannel, like, you know, uh, the chino shorts, like things like that. But I cannot wear it in the gym and I cannot promote their active wear. You can still use my code and get the same percent off as any of the all the other athletes for anything you purchase at Young LA, but I cannot promote the active wear stuff. I can only promote the street wear stuff like the jeans and like the flannel, things like that. And as Gymshark, I just can promote everything um, and I am exclusive to them in terms of the active wear uh, thing. So yeah, so I'm kind of on both because I, I consider Young LA as like a streetwear company and Gymshark is my active wear. Who's got the bigger dumpy, Zach or Joe off season Zach? I definitely think Zach because Zach's taller than Joe, you know, more volume of the dumpy. And also Joe kind of has like a, a Hulk butt or like a softball girl butt. He's kind of got like, not like that round, he's got like a, like a square like muscle. So yeah, definitely Joe. Um, that's gonna wrap up this q and I just wanted to hop in here and just kind of let you guys know what's been up lately. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And before this video ends, I wanted to let you guys know, um, literally 20 minutes, 30 minutes ago, however long this video. Literally when I posted this video, Young LA had a drop. So if you click the link in the description, you can shop anything Young LA. These flannels drop, these shorts drop. I have everything on screen right here. Not everything, but a lot of things on screen right over there that Young LA has dropped and that drop. And uh, yeah, you can go shop there. Use code LEX right here at checkout, L-E-X-X at checkout. 15% off of your order. So yeah, I'd appreciate it. And yesterday, as this video is posted, Gorilla had a recent stock as well if you want to go in the description code balls or code lex at checkout um and shop there as well for 10 percent off your order uh yeah guys i love you all so much more than anything in this world man i mean you guys are the reason i can do anything that i do so yeah i love you all that's a wrap hope you enjoyed like comment subscribe you know the deal